the hope that the public is politically, economically, geopolitically ignorant, illiterate. Is that true, Lord Moncton, or will they succeed? Where they, do you see they, this they going? What are the main complete, topics? They have complete contempt for ordinary people. They also, and this is their weakness, they have complete contempt, contempt for the very concept of objective truth. That's the truth which is true whether you or I or they or anyone likes it or not. And they, in nailing their clothes to the mast of the sinking ship global warming, will find that in the end the truth will catch them out. Those who depart from the truth will always end up trying to force their opinions on the world through dictatorial governing systems, because in the end, the people won't stand for it. And so they know they can only impose their will by force. But in doing so, they make themselves and the lies they tell ever more unpopular. So the more they go down the frankly fascist route, which Obama mapped out in his driveling 14-minute speech, which annoyed everybody here, the more they go down that route, the more certain they make it that their defeat will be ultimately a crushing one. And I think that the extreme left, the totalitarian, fascist, communist left, call them what you will, the people who think they know best about this and about everything and that no alternative point of view should be allowed, you should be ostracized as being politically incorrect at very best, and on this climate matter you should be executed for disagreeing with them. These people are of the devil. Let's be very blunt about this. Because they have lost all respect for the truth, and they do not care how many tens of millions worldwide their lies continue to kill every year, these people are of the devil. And what we have to do is very simply, very quietly, go on stating the truth, explaining there's been no global warming. And they are losing. Years. They are losing. They're losing big time, explaining that there's been only one third of the warming that they predicted in 1990 in their first UN report on the climate. It's simply not happening as they predicted. That the sea ice in the Arctic that Al Gore said confidently in 2007 in Bali, I sat next to him while he said it. He said in 2007, by 2013, there will be no ice in the Arctic. And he was applauded by all the zombies in the room. And only I said, oh, for heaven's sake, come off it. That's not going to happen. And you know it perfectly well. And I was the lone voice of dissent because the left have decided that they can tell any lie they want. And the robots in the schools who are the teachers there, they just pass this on to the kids. The kids are no longer taught to think for themselves or check what their teachers tell them. They end up, this is a new belief system. I no longer call them alarmists. I just call them believers because this is a new superstition. It's a belief system that they have very foolishly adopted. But the left has made a, a huge strategic mistake in making the climate their number one issue. And I agree with you, Lord Moncton. And by the way, uh, they've now had someone who I've met and had dinner with and who's not seen to be the sharpest knife in the drawer, not bashing him. He just seemed to be, quite frankly, 70 IQ or so. And that is uh, Sean Penn. He, I believe, is a useful idiot they use who literally lead around by a chain. Uh, I'm not being mean. He just is so childlike, a five-year-old level education and, and mindset and brain cells. He has said that those that deny global warming are a cult. Fox News is a cult. Well, Fox News is more liberal than conservative. The point is, is that he's freaking out calling us a cult. Well, a cult is who says arrest us because we say climate change isn't man-made. I mean, these people are a freakish group of totalitarians led by uh, pitch men who can hardly tie their shoelaces. So they really are an embarrassment. Yes, they are. I mean, there's no doubt that the Hollywood love is have been reliably wrong on every major political question. And one almost has sympathy with McCarthy when he tried to round up all the communists in Hollywood because they're all still there and they all come out and they bleat ineffectually about how uh, the, you know, the Fox News invented the skeptics and that kind of, you know, Sean Penn's drivel. They're the definition um, of useful idiot. They are. He's a use, he is what Lenin and Stalin would have called a useful idiot. There's an awful lot of them. And these are not the fraudsters. These are not the people you can put in jail for, 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 for making up bogus science. The ones you can do that with are the people who are scientists, 
who know perfectly well that their own results tell them now that we're not going to get a lot of global warming, we're not going to get any ocean acidification. They're now, interestingly, beginning to admit that. Even the communist rag new scientist has just come out and said, oh, we got it wrong on ocean acidification. It's now quite clear that in the area where corals are flourishing, uh, the corals themselves actually make the ocean more acidic and they, and they thrive and survive in that. And Patrick Moore gave us a very good lecture on this today. They are wrong about everything, these Hollywood lovies. They're wrong about everything. And we are gradually encircling them with the truth. And this is what's going to happen to the left. The left having said, we know best, nobody can take any alternative point of view. We're the and boss, we're in charge, we're they are going God. To be proven wrong. We control right? free speech. I mean, how arrogant is that? They, 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 they will find they can't because they're wrong. And it's becoming almost embarrassing now the, the lengths to which they will go to avoid having any direct debate with any of us because they know we know more about the science and the economics than they do. And they also, the more honest ones, there are a few, they know perfectly well that they got this wrong and they got this far wronger than they ever thought they would. Well, sure, let me say this. Let me interrupt you. Let me interrupt you because you mentioned this. I've yeah. had high-powered people, famous Hollywood folks, uh, billionaires, you name it, go, Alex, you're right. The Earth's climate changes. It's the sun. We're going into a cooling cycle. It doesn't matter. Isn't it good we're drawing attention to the environment? Isn't it good we're setting up a global system to counter problems? Aren't there real problems? I go, yeah. Overfishing, some GMO, toxic waste dumping, that's national issues or international agreements, not about a carbon tax when China is exempt. No. So they now admit, okay, it's a fraud, but it's for a greater good. That's what they quietly say at dinner. That's right. They're beginning to realize they've lost the argument. So now they're looking for an out they're, because at the moment they are cornered rats. They've dug themselves into this corner and we have encircled them with the truth and they can't get out. And so they're saying to us, please, please, please be nice to us and tell us that uh, even though we got the science wrong, we're still doing something useful. Well, no, it is never useful to propose or take any action based on a lie. Because when the lie gets found out and you then say to people, but we want to be the champions of the environment, people are going to turn around and say, you lied to us about global warming. You might be lying to us about everything else. We're not going to listen to you anymore. So lying as a basis for action on the environment is not the way forward. The truth is that in the Western world, we have largely put the environment to rights. We've cleaned up the air, we've cleaned up the, the water courses, we've cleaned up the fishing grounds, we've cleaned up the seashore. We, we are now running a reasonably taut ship environment-wise. We don't need to take all that much more in action to make sure the environment's looked after. It is in the third world countries that, as you just so rightly said, have exempted themselves or been exempted by Obama, in China's case, from playing any part in this. Now, China, within the next 10 years, is going to be emitting half of all the CO2 that the world emits. Now, I say good luck to it. We need more CO2 in, in the air. I don't I think that's a bad thing. The point is that if you exempt China from agreements which are supposed to reduce global CO2, the one thing those agreements will not do is reduce global CO2. We'll and also the empower them to take all the jobs. Lying releases to the extent of saying that China is cutting its CO2 emissions and is cutting its use of coal. It isn't. It's increasing its use of coal with every year that passes. They have enormous numbers of coal-fired power stations built and not yet even turned it, on. It's total but fraud. It's totally discriminatory. I want to talk about... Lord Box, I want to talk about the conference itself and take some phone calls. I was just about to go yeah. to a caller, but he hung up uh, from Europe. He wanted to ask you, we got a caller from Australia, too, and Amber from Kentucky and Philip from Arizona. We'll go to them in a few minutes at 800-259-9231. But what about specifically, to get into their question, what do we do about these, these, these world courts and other organizations when they actually start trying to fine or fee people? Or is that all just bluff? What they're trying to do is they're trying to find a way of making Western countries do what the UN tells them, what this new global government tells them. The court, uh, at least to start with anyway, is not supposed to have any power over individuals. It, you know, they wouldn't dare. Frankly, they would be very stupid if they tried to come after me, for instance, and say, you are a prominent skeptic, therefore we're going to put you on trial for your life because of your skepticism, because they know perfectly well that in a courtroom... 
where I can cross-examine them when they come out with their drivel, and I can say, where is your evidence for it? And I can then take their evidence apart, show how it's been tampered with, etc. They know that any, any judge worth his salt looking at the evidence is going to find in our favour, just as we did when we took Al Gore's wretched movie to court, when the British government tried to ram it down sure. the throats of the school children. Sure, absolutely, and, then, and, and you had it thrown out. In 2007. So I think they are bluffing. I think they're trying it on. I think they would love that court to grow into a court where they could put people on trial sure. for their lives, daring to uh, express dissent. But they are terrified sure. of going head-to-head -head with us adversarially in a court. The only court cases they What about the question from like Dave? Past the EPA, where both sides want the same green result. What about and Prince where, Charles saying... You shouldn't have cars. You shouldn't have air conditioning like Obama said to Africans. Well, he gets so much government funding. What do you make of Prince Charles saying, save the earth, pay carbon taxes? What do you say to Prince Charles? A caller asked that. Dave asked that. Simple, that. The moment Prince Charles gets on his bike and sells every Aston Martin and Jensen Interceptor and other fancy car he's got in his garage, when he sells Highgrove, I'll buy it from him for a pound. And when he get, lives in a tent, a yurt, that's the fashionable thing among Greens at the moment, when he lives as he tells us to live, same with Al Gore, then I will at least respect him as a man of conviction. While he lives like a prince and asks us to live like paupers, I have no time for him and he is not fit to be our king. I agree. I mean, sir, that. don't you get, uh, I mean, your view on this, but don't, doesn't the public get that you have people on jet airplanes, red carpets, eating caviar, $1,000 a plate dinners, telling people don't consume, don't live? It, it, it's so incredibly hypocritic. I mean, I just don't get how they would even do something this arrogant. What's wrong with not these people? Just, it's not just hypocritical. It's not just arrogant. It's downright offensive. It is expressing contempt for the ordinary people on whose backs that this is a new aristocracy with none of the grace, elegance, handsomeness, and wit of the old. This is an aristocracy of blackguards, an aristocracy of bureaucrats, of bloodless little men who, like Prince Charles, wish to have all the comforts of civilization while denying those comforts to the rest well, sure. of us. I've just been reading Mark Twain's wonderful account of uh, a Connecticut Yankee at the court of King Arthur, where he gives a, a pretty... Uh, downbeat description of the way in which the Arthurian court treated the ordinary people with complete contempt. And that is now coming back. We're getting the Arthurian court. We're getting these creeps trying to set themselves up as kings over us. And Prince Charles, of course, at the moment, is in line to be the king. Well, as us. you know, any they true aristocracy that didn't deliver... demanding that we make sacrifices that he is not prepared to make and demanding that we make their sacrifices when there is no need to make them anyway. Sure. Well, Lord Moncton, as you know, any aristocracy in history that didn't deliver prosperity got overthrew. Any aristocracy that didn't take the field in battle got overthrew. We have an aristocracy never even been in the military, tells the poor you should be poor. I mean, this is the most insane aristocracy I've ever seen. Well, uh, Prince Charles has done himself and the monarchy, and indeed the aristocracy, untold harm by bleating on ignorantly about this. He's not a very bright lad. He's not the brightest shilling in the pile. And his trouble is that he thinks he's studied this. And of course, he's, he simply has no scientific knowledge. Most of the British governing class don't. I'm rather rare in that respect, because I've taught myself enough science to find my, my way around this and find where the lies are. He is incapable of doing that. And he's way out of his depth. He is able to make a very good speech. I've seen him at St. James's Palace speaking for an hour without notes on this subject. He, he's very passionate about it, but he, the trouble is the content is totally empty. He knows absolutely He's, he's able nothing. to regurgitate uh, horse crap. John in Australia, you're on the air with Lord Moncton. Go ahead. Hello, Alex and Christopher. Welcome. Go Hello, ahead, John. John. Good to hear you. Yeah, good, good to hear from, from you too. Um... Yeah, um, I used to believe in this global warming because I got scared into it and I was, like, panic-stricken. And then I started doing my own research and I watched lots and lots of videos of you, Lord Moncton. And um, I found it all to be um, the global warming is nothing but a hoax. It's just a money-making scheme. And you've got Al Gore, who's saying about about all this pollution, and he gets in a jet and he flies all over the world. It's It's hypocrisy. They, they don't even, they don't even um, practice what they preach. They know it's a fraud. That's a very good word. Not only is he a, a, a hypocrite, he's a liar. 
because when he came to Gibraltar for a debate, which should have been a debate with me, but he cried off at the last moment and just gave a talk uh, in the name of the government there, they paid him $300,000 to do 